Well, for more on what the IMF is doing to support the fight against climate change, let's bring in Daniel Krieger. He's the executive director and co-founder of the Association of Climate Change Officers. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Rochelle. It's great to be back. So first, I want to get your highlights from today's IMF discussion. Well, you know, I think the, at the heart of what we've been talking about in global response to climate change has been how are we going to help the countries who are hit hardest by climate change deal with the impacts of it, and how do we provide them the funding to make sure that they don't go the path that industrialization in the Western world and in developed nations today went through over the past 100 years. So what the IMF has done is proposed the notion of establishing a trust that will help low-income countries get past this pandemic um, and invest in both the kinds of infrastructure that will help them develop while not contributing to the problem, as well as help them be resilient to the impacts of climate change. And what sort of message do you think this sends, having the IMF chief Gorgieva, having this announcement about creating this trust to help economies become more climate friendly? Well, we need a lot more signals like this and from a not, lot more entities than just the IMF. But it's a start, um, and it's backed by the G20. So at least it has significant support. We're going to have to build on that. So then what did we hear about the crucial actions already being taken by developed countries? Well, uh, under the Paris Agreement, uh, all developed countries put forward some set of commitments toward not just reducing their own greenhouse gas emissions, but also funding developing nations and helping the challenge that the challenges they face in dealing with the impacts of climate change. But what we also know is that those commitments that were made over the past five years are not sufficient. We are not on track. So they're going to have to raise their games. So why is it that despite all these warnings, a lot of countries still continue to fall short and really not just, just funding these things, but really implementing them? Uh, well, <laughs> it's, uh, there are a couple of things that we have to deal with. First of all, societal transformation is not easy. Um, and this is going to take public will and not just political will. Uh, this is going to require us to see the environment in a way that is different than we've historically seen it. We tend to look at the environment through the lens of animals and trees and habitat. And what we need to do is think about this as what sustains us. And that's a big education transformation that needs to take place. And then there's a marketplace and the economy transformation. We don't value the ecosystems that sustain us the way we properly should. And it's certainly true if you don't live somewhere where you feel like you're directly affected by perhaps some of these major floods and things like that. Um, we did see some recent action by China as they continue to make progress on some of these COP goals, including now this fund that, were, that was recently announced re regarding uh, biodiversity. How would you characterize China's progress on COP goals? Well, first of all, their commitment to peak emissions by 2030 and to source 20 percent of their uh, energy from clean energy sources a few years ago uh, fundamentally changed the clean energy marketplace. Uh, their demand is so significant that it, it changed supply and demand. Uh, and so those announcements and their steps in that direction already are significant. Their commitment to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060 is significant. The question is, are they going to achieve those goals uh, it's too early to tell right now. Um, and is it enough? Um, I would say it's not fast enough. But it's moving in the right direction, and it's better than where they were 10 years ago. And as you mentioned, this is going to be a holistic effort, not just public, but what about private as well? Talk about the role of the private sector in really making meaningful change when it comes to climate change action. Yeah, well, so when I said societal transformation, I meant it is all hands on deck. Uh, we are going to have to completely revamp how we function as a society, and that means markets, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, government, social systems. All of our systems are going to need to be evolving to meet the world that we're entering into. Uh, the world we used to be into isn't the one that we are transitioning into now. And so the private sector has a huge role here. 
uh, if they want to thrive, they're going to need to adapt. And they have a significant burden and responsibility as well. But they're also part of the solution. The innovation that we need, the technology that we need is going to come in through a combination of public investment in it and private innovation and monetization of it.